So it looks like it's starting to heat up. Let me put in another piece and see if it starts doing any bubbling or something like that. Yeah, it's starting to heat up. Um, so I'll add this in when it's a little bit warmer. Um, the other way beeswax comes in is if you want to buy it in maybe a craft store or you can certainly buy this online or these little you know things and they will dissolve more quickly and it's easier to measure out an amount but of course it's not supporting your local bee guy you know um, so you just have to decide for convenience today I brought this let me try another piece I'm starting to smell it so I think I'll turn it down just a little bit okay and get in there you and you don't want it to smoke and I do think actually it's getting hot turn it down a little bit more you don't want oil to smoke so hopefully I can avoid that so I'm just you know putting the dongwei in trying not to splash myself or else I'll need the ointment before it's made So I have like a slotted, it's not really a spoon, but I have a thing, so I, oop, sorry, that was loud. Um, and so it just needs to, now it is simmering, I can see little bubbles come. Um, and I just have to, you know, let it cook, get a little darker. Um, it says until it's blackened or until it's dark. Um, it's not like a time. It's a thing. But you want it not to smoke. I'll talk about the smoke point later. So you kind of have to find the balance between it cooking so slow that it never gets cooked. But you don't want it to smoke either. So it has to be like too low, low fire. Well, if it's too low, it won't turn golden. So I may turn it up again. But it seems to be bubbling and foaming. Um, so when I take them out, I have like a little, there's just a thing that I, I will use to like put the dregs in. And um, actually, you know, when I do this in classes with in-person people, um, you know, when we take out the dangue, it is like dangue french fries and some people, or dangue chips. <laughs> and some people, I don't really like it that much, but, um, you know, some people actually like it. So you're welcome to try the dangue chips when they come out. Those of you who are here, it's starting to foam, so I'm going to turn it down a little bit more, but not out, hopefully. Okay. And I don't know. With all the foam on top, it's hard to see, but it is starting to change color. See how things quick. Yeah. But on the side, because you're in front of the camera. I mean, you could probably get over here and no problem, but anyway, I don't know if the camera is able to see. There's a piece of Shangdi, oops, it just fell off, but it's, you know, getting darker and darker. Like if this were French fries, it would certainly be done, but we might want it to get a little darker than this. Um, I mean, get another piece that's been underneath. Hopefully I won't burn myself and then swear on camera. <laughs> you can see it's, it's changing color. Um, so this is just like a part where we wait a little bit longer. So let's see, what else do I want to tell you? Um, so when this comes out, then we're going to pour the wax in and let it melt. We will probably can turn the heat off at that point um, or pretty soon afterwards and stir it in and then I'm going to strain it and I did this time use cheesecloth, bring cheesecloth um, so I just buy a big old thing of cheesecloth, I try to get the unbleached, I don't know if it makes any difference but um, you can buy it in grocery stores or kitchen stores or craft stores um, and I folded the cheesecloth into a few layers so let me see if I can get a piece out to show you but it's getting relatively dark. Maybe that's dark enough. I'm going to call that dark enough. Okay. So for now, I'm going to move it off the burner 
to strain it out. Is the burner still on? Yeah. Um, but I might want to put it back on when the wax goes in. So I could put this in a cloth and wring it out like when it's a little cooler, but I'm not going to, you know. Uh. Sorry, this just takes a minute for it to drip. We don't want to lose the oil into the leftovers. Okay, maybe that's enough. Get back in there, you. So I'm just getting the big pieces out. Doesn't have to be perfect because we'll strain it. Okay. So I'm going to add the wax in. And uh, well, I'll tell you when I'm back on the slideshow. Let's put this here for another little minute and give it another little stir. And so, you know, you can see those yellow things aren't dissolved um, yet. So I just want to wait till I don't see any of the yellow things. But I think at this point I can turn this off. Is it off? Yeah, it should be off. Okay. And it looks pretty dissolved. So, so I know I said before, oh, don't use plastic if you can help it, but you know, I do for some things. This is actually good because when you're ready to pour it, you can squeeze it to, you know, um, pour it more easily and um, then you don't really have to clean it like you would. If you used a glass container, it's like really hard to clean. That's another thing I want to say. This pot is like a dedicated pot that's used for like beeswax stuff because it's very hard to get it a hundred percent perfectly clean so I don't use this not that I cook much but I don't if I do cook I don't use this pot this is just like for wax stuff so sometimes people are like nervous about this but actually it, it if I pour slowly and there's no big thing plopping out you know the what do you call it? The gauze will stay in place. So there's not too much, you know, powdery stuff here, but, you know, I, I kept a little bit of it better. And then I could try and squeeze it. If I'm not careful, though, it'll kind of burn my fingers. But, yeah, I could get a little more out.